All right, let's remind ourselves about the uh, steps to work a single frequency sinusoidal steady state AC circuits problem. Uh, we're going to express our sources as phasors. We are going to express all of our components with complex impedances if need be. Uh, we are going to use some kind of a circuit analysis technique that we have already learned somewhere else to try to bring to bear on this one. So we've already probably done this on a DC circuit. Um, and we're going to try to take that same method and apply it to our AC circuit. And if required, we might have to convert our results back to time domain using a cosine function. Okay, so that's a quick overview of our steps that we talked about to be able to work a single frequency sinusoidal steady state AC problem. So here's our problem. Find the time domain voltage and current for the two millihenry inductor. That's pretty simple, should be. So what should we do? What is step one? Step one said, take any of your sources that might be expressed in time domain and express them in frequency domain, right? So I do that for the little voltage source that I have over here. It becomes five volts right, at an angle of 10 degrees. The reason I could just do that one directly is that it is already expressed in terms of a cosine function, right? So that is what that source is right there. Now what about this other source? I've got one amp times the sine of 500 per second T plus 110 degrees. Can I just do one amp angle 110? or not. Okay, I don't think it's a wise idea to do it that way. Here's why. This is a sine function, so we want to make sure we are converting this properly. You basically subtract 90 degrees from the angle that you have if it's given with sine. So if this turned out, if it was at the beginning, 110 degrees for my angle, I'm just going to subtract 90 degrees from that. Okay, so that would be 20 degrees. Right, so this is just one amp angle, 20 degrees. That's that source expressed as a phaser. Okay, actually we are done with step one. It said express your sources, right, as phasers. So we finished with that part. Step two is take all of your uh, circuit components and try to express them as complex impedances. Okay, tell you what, instead of just keeping this circuit like it is, I'm going to start just erasing each one of these little components as I find them and put in instead a little box that says, here is my complex impedance for that component. Let me start with a 1.2 millihenry inductor, right? So 1.2 millihenry times J, right? What I'm doing here for that piece is J omega L. So J omega and L, or excuse me, that's the L part. Omega is what? Because this says 5,000 per second and it doesn't put any units on the 5,000, how do you interpret the 5,000 per second? You interpret that as 5,000 radians per second. So when we actually punch these values in, the 1.2 millihenries is actually 5,000 times 1.2 millihenries is point 0012 Henry's. This gives me J6 ohms. Right? And that was for this little inductor that's right up here at the top. So I'm going to put in J6 ohms. What about my 25 microfarad capacitor over here? 25 microfarad, we do that with a minus J over. 5,000 radian per second times 25 microfarads. That's going to just be equal to uh, 25 times 10 to the minus sixth farads. Farad is a second per ohm. I could punch that in if I cared to. Let me just report to you what that becomes. That becomes minus J8 ohms.
Got some nice clean numbers on this one. So here's a question. If that was a 25 microfarad, here I've got a 50 microfarad being driven at the same frequency. Should I even need to do any math? What would that be like by doubling this value? What happens? Okay, you, you might go, well, I double that value, so I should double the, the value of the... Is that right? No, that, that number is in the denominator, right? So this one was 25 microfarads, this one was 50 microfarads. That means down here I should have a negative J4, right? should be actually half. And these were both in ohms. I meant to label that, but let me get that on there. Now, what about this 2 millihenry over here? I guess I'll quickly do that one. 5,000 times 0.002. 10. So this is going to be J10 ohms. And I don't really have to replace the resistor because it's already in the right kind of form where I could just use it directly, right? Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this particular problem is I wanted to show you how some of the problems that are in your homework and stuff, how do those come to be, right? Um, a lot of the problems that you have in homework or on a test or whatever, it'll just show these little boxes and say, hey, you've got this Im complex impedance of J6 ohms or whatever, okay? I'm showing you those come from actual circuit components, but it makes your job easier if the problem just tells you what, these, what are in these boxes from the beginning. And many of your homework problems or test problems will do just that. And it sort of saves you from having to do the initial part of, of calculating your complex impedances. Okay? So let me just, I'm going to erase that because all that was pretty easy. And we have now converted our circuit into the format that we needed to be able to do the rest of our AC analysis. Now that I've got all this done, um, what do you feel like a good technique would be to approach this problem? Because we're at step three now, right? It says use any of the circuit analysis techniques developed for DC circuits, only now use complex numbers. Voltages and currents are like phasors. Resistances are like complex impedances. How would you approach this problem if it was a DC problem? Okay, I heard someone say source transformation. This is a great problem for source transformation. Okay, but what does that look like? That looks like is the first step I would do is to come over here and sort of slice off that voltage source that's in series with that complex impedance. If I slice that off, I can replace it with a current source that is now in parallel with the same complex impedance, right? So this will be J6 ohms over here. What do I need to put in for my transformed source over here, my, my uh, new current source that I've got over there? Okay, what I need to put in there is 5 angle 10. Multiply or divide by my complex impedance. I should have volts per ohm equals amps, right? So, uh, 5 angle 10 divided by J6. And I'm going to convert that into a polar form. That gives me 0.8333 at an angle of negative 80. That's in amps. Now that connects up with a current source in parallel with another complex impedance. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Instead of drawing it to where I've kind of got these two little terminals that hook up into there. Now I've just got a bunch of stuff that's in parallel, so why don't I draw it in the easiest way to see how they combine, right? This one right here is another current source, and I'll draw it right there instead of to the right of that other source, and this is just one amp at an angle of 20 degrees. That was in parallel with a minus J4 ohms. Now that is all going to hook up into the rest of the circuit, and I don't have a good way of transforming that just yet, so I'll just draw the rest of it, right? Minus J8 ohms. This is going to come down through the 12 ohm resistor, and then finally over here I'm going to have my J10 ohms. Okay, 
Now the reason I draw it all this way is you can see here that my two current sources, those are just two ideal current sources, they can add directly. And then what about my impedances over here? How do those combine? Okay, those two impedances are two impedances in parallel, so they combine the same way that two resistances in parallel, in parallel would combine. So let me go ahead and get those combined. I've got this value that I just found, 0.83333 amps, angle negative 80. I'm going to add that to 1 amp at an angle of 20 degrees. And that gives me okay, 1.185 amps at an angle of negative 23.82 degrees. This becomes just one current source that I'm going to put in parallel now with just one complex impedance that will be the parallel combination of J6 ohms and negative J4 ohms. So 6i times negative 4i divided by 6i plus 4i. In electrical engineering speak, we would do negative J12 ohms. All right, but what does that hook up into? Okay, all the same stuff over here, right? Negative J8 ohms going down into my 12 ohms. And then over here, I still have my J10 ohms. So none of that changed over there. What's next, do you think? How about if I take that current source that is now in parallel with that uh, impedance, and I convert that into a, an equivalent practical voltage source. Right? So let's say I do that with a voltage source, something like this. I'm still going to have negative 12 or negative J12 ohms here. That's going to be in series with a negative J8 ohms, which is going to be hooked up into the rest of everything over there, 12 ohms there, and then J10 ohms over here. What value do I need for my voltage source over here? Okay, all it's gonna be is the value that I had for my current source multiplied by that complex impedance. 1.185 at an angle of negative 23 0.82, that's going to get multiplied by negative 12i. That gives me 14.22 at an angle of negative 113.8 degrees. And that should be volts. Thank you. It makes me happy when you guys know what's going on enough to tell me when I make mistakes. All right. Wonderful. Why do I want to put it in that form, you think? Here's why. See these two complex impedances? What can I do with those? Yeah, those just add together in series, which ends up giving me negative J20 ohms. Right? So I'll skip a, a, you know, a mild step right there. In the yellow is negative J20 ohms, right? So if I convert that now back into a practical current source again, right, I can take that practical current source and stick it across a negative J20 ohm impedance. So what I need to do for that is to divide that result I just got by negative J20. This is 0.711 angle of minus 23.82. This is in amps, negative 23.82 degrees. This hooks up into the rest of it, right? The 12 ohm is still here, and over here I have J10 ohms. All right, a bunch of different ways that we could go here at this point. Um, ultimately, what we wanted was what? Voltage and current through the 2 millihenry inductor, which is this J10 ohms over here. I think the fastest way to get there is to go ahead and combine these two complex impedances 
right, these two right here, those are going to combine in parallel. Once I have those combined in parallel, I can do current division and come up with the current that flows through that leg of the circuit over there. Okay, so that's where I'm heading. Uh, when I combine in the purple right there, what that gives me is 12 ohms times minus J20 ohms over 12 ohms plus J20. Excuse me. That one's also going to be minus because I'm adding a minus J20 ohms. So when I do that, 12 times 20i is in the numerator. We're going to divide that by the sum of 12 and negative J20. So these are, this is in ohms. Now that we know that in the purple there, that is what the equivalent impedance is in the purple, how do I figure out what the current is that flows over here? Here's how I would look at doing that. I is going to be equal to 0 0.711 amps angle negative 23.82 degrees multiplied by 8.824 minus J 5.294 ohms over 8.824 minus J times 5.294 ohms plus J 10 ohms. That would be what current division would look like for that circuit and that gives me the current that flows through that J 10 ohm impedance over there. Let me just report it to you. That ends up giving me 0.732 amps at an angle of negative 82.86 degrees. That was half of what I wanted you to find. What was the other half? Voltage. How do I do voltage? I take current and multiply by complex impedance. That gives me voltage. So let me do 0.732 at an angle of negative 82.86 and multiply this by J10. That gives me 7.32 at an angle of 7.14. How do I express these in time domain? Because I think that's what it asked us to find, right? If I want those in time domain, all I do is I uh, express them in the form of 0 0.732 amps cosine of omega. Omega, you might remember, was 5,000 per second T minus 82.86 degrees. That's the current that goes through the inductor. What about the voltage? This just means 7.32 volts times the cosine of 5,000 per second T plus 7.14 degrees. And that is the final answer for what we were trying to find. Definitely interesting on this one that you're, you have a, a fairly large difference in phase angle for your current through that element than the voltage. As a matter of fact, does it look like exactly some kind of a number? Okay, going from negative 82.86 to positive 7.14, you change by 90 degrees. Why? We could have said that before you even, like at the beginning of the problem, I could have told you that the difference in those two angles was going to be 90 degrees. Why? Because in an inductor, which is what that leg of the circuit is, right? Your current lags your voltage by 90 degrees. So I'm looking at here and I say, it looks to me like my current is 90 degrees behind where my voltage is. So that's some confirmation for us that we may have done some things right. Okay, I think that's it.
Any questions? All right. Y'all have a good day.